I have an article here from BindedToComics.com. Dungeons & Dragons Senior Game Designer disavows how series was made by white dudes. Boast that much of the original material would never pass our inclusivity reviews today. Delivering what is perhaps one of the most self-aggrandizing virtue signals in recent history. Current D&D senior, senior game designer Jason Tondra was take, taken to proudly touting the fact that much of the series' original material, which he condescendingly writes all things to having been made by white dudes, would never pass our inclusivity reviews today. He was talking on a, a show with official D&D content creator Tom Kenrick and promotion of Wizards of the Coast's upcoming series-centric history book, Dungeons & Dragons, The Making of Original D&D 1970-1977. You get a timestamp there if you, want to read, if you want to hear it for yourself. But he's basically talking about, you know, the inclusivity reviews and, oh, we did multiple. Let's take a step back here. Let's clarify. There are materials in original D&D that would never pass our inclusivity reviews today. Some of you can understand, like the original name of the warrior class was the Fighting Man. Because that's what they were used to. They were all men. They were all white dudes from Lake Geneva and the Twin Cities. Yes, you read that right. Tondro just dismissed D&D creators Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson as nothing more than ignorant white dudes. Following this, and so he continued, that's just a tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of material in this book, and I won't go over all of it. We would not pass our inclusivity reviews today. We couldn't change it. It's history. What we can do is acknowledge it and show how far we've come, because that's not D&D anymore. Then he turns his virtue signal up to max brightness. Then he talks about, oh, the more diverse you know people play the game, and you know, they see themselves in the game and stuff. The more diverse the creators get, the more diverse the players become. That's the, that's the way it should be. You know, and he talks about how it's played, who plays it, and how it's created. In many ways, the way it's created is part is the part that changed the least. Because a huge driver in early D&D was fan creations, and that's still true today. Hilariously, that last declaration by Tondra actually proves as a counter to everything he said above. As to his point, D&D never barred anyone of any identity from being represented in the game, specifically because its entire existence is based on the fact that the players create their characters and adventures as they see fit. And of all other declarations that tabletop RPGs were never inclusive, while some individual dungeon masters and story settings may implement some limits on character creation in order to help boost players' emergence for a specific campaign, there has never been any official rule in D&D barring players from assigning whatever traits they want to their completely custom characters. Further, it should be noted that it was not just Tondra's interview with Kenrick which saw an official D&D source feign such pearl clutching towards the inclusion of the game's original contents in the making of D&D. They got an official... Description here, and of course, I gotta put their little dis disclaimer in there. We're talking about Wizards of the Coast, some older content may reflect ethnic, racial, and gender prejudices that were commonplace at, in American society at the time, and blah blah blah. And of course, yeah, you can you read it for yourself if you really want. I'll, I'll post the link in the description box, but just absurd virtue signaling. And it's like, talk about being disrespectful. I they, they also they mention here that the book, you know, rolls onto store shelves on June 18th. There ain't no way in hell I'd be paying money for that fucking shit. To hear from these fucking idiots who are going to be that disrespectful. Oh, white dudes. It would never pass our inclusivity reviews today. Like, I, 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 that's a good thing. You know, you're the people who see orcs and think those are black people. When I see orcs, I think of orcs. I don't think of black people. And what the, what the hell is that stuff? I've never thought that. It's like those people who, who want to say that like black people are apes or monkeys or gorillas or whatever. I'm, I don't see how in the hell you even think that. Like how in the world do you come up with that conclusion? That's racist as hell. And it's the same way with orcs, in my opinion. I've heard some people, I think the new thing is uh, yetis. I've seen some people complaining on social media the other day about, well, a lot of times they, they'll have braids on yetis or, or something to that effect or, you know, kinky hair or something. You know, you know how those people are. They're always, they're idiots. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm starting to ramble a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, I'll, I'll link this in the description box. You can read it for yourself. But thank you very much.